everybody, welcome to mini beginner's crash course through Elasticsearch and Kibana. My name is Lisa Jung and I'm a developer advocate at Elastic. So this is a series of short videos for developers who want to get started with Elasticsearch and Kibana. In episode 14, we learned about the should and filter clauses of the bool query. Today, we'll go over what aggregations are, more specifically about metric aggregations and when to write these aggregations requests. Before we get to that, let's do a quick review. So there are two main ways to search in Elasticsearch. These are queries and aggregations. Queries are used to retrieve documents that match the specified criteria. For example, let's say you're managing an e-commerce app and you want to pull up an invoice with order number 12345. In this case, you would send a query to retrieve that invoice. But sometimes we're not only interested in retrieving documents, we also want the summary of data because it contains the insights that we're looking for. So let's go back to our e-commerce app example. And let's say we wanted the summary of monthly revenue from Germany. In this case, you need to send an aggregations request, which summarizes your data as metrics, statistics, or other analytics. Now with Elasticsearch, you can run both queries and aggregations. And so far, we primarily focus on queries. In the next four episodes, we'll focus on different types of aggregations requests and when to use them. And the best way to show you how these aggregations work is by running these requests with Elasticsearch and Kibana. To do that, we'll be working with an e-commerce data set and running aggregations requests on it. And this will help us gain insights about our data. So in order to do that, we need to complete four steps. First step is to set up and run Elasticsearch and Kibana. Then we add the e-commerce data set to Elasticsearch. Afterwards, we set up data within Elasticsearch. Now, lastly, we'll pull up the Kibana console in one window and the part four repo in another. I've already covered how you can complete these steps in a separate video. So go to the link on the screen, then watch the video from timestamp 410 to 750 to complete these steps. Okay, so let's get organized here. I have two windows open side by side. On the left, I have the Kibana console. On the right, I have the part four repo. This repo contains all the aggregations requests we'll go over. I've already scrolled down to get information about documents in an index section. So to learn about aggregations, we've added a brand new data set of e-commerce data. So before we run aggregations requests, let's figure out what information is included in our data set. This way, we know what type of questions we could ask and also on which field we need to run aggregations on. And there's a query that you could use for that. So let's take a look at the example here. So for all requests we'll go over, I've included the general syntax for you. So you could customize this for your own use case. But for our tutorial, we'll use the request shown under example. So my e-commerce data has been added to an index I named e-commerce data. So what this request is saying is get search results from e-commerce data index. So let's copy and paste that into the console. Make sure to select and send. Now this will pull up information about documents in our index. So if you look at lines 10 through 13, it'll tell you that we have greater than 10,000 documents in our index. Now when you look at line 16 hits, it shows you an array of top 10 hits by default. So if you look at the first hit, you'll see that this document belongs to an index called e-commerce data. And if you look under source on line 22, it'll list all the fields, the content a document contains. So each document is a transaction of an item and it lists information such as the description of the item, quantity of the item sold, invoice number, unit price of an item, country where the item was sold, 
invoice date, as well as stock code. So this query request is really useful to gauge what type of questions we could ask and which fields we need to aggregate on to get the answers. So let's scroll down to aggregations request section. So the basic syntax of an aggregations request looks something like this. You start with get followed by name of the index, then the search endpoint. In a JSON object, you add ags here, which is short for aggregations. Then you name your aggregations however you see fit. Then specify the type of aggregations here. Then you specify the field that you want to aggregate on. So there are different types of aggregations that you could run with Elasticsearch, and one of them is metric aggregations. So let's scroll down to that section. Now, metric aggregations are used to compute numeric values based on your data set. For example, you could use metric aggregations to compute the sum, minimum, maximum, average, unique count, and etc. So when you're running an e-commerce app, it's important to know how your business is performing. And a great way to measure that is to compute these metrics we just talked about. So let's see how we can calculate these values. So the first thing that we're going to do is to identify fields that have numeric values. So let's go back to our hits and look at the fields. So fields like quantity and unit price have numeric values. So these are the fields that we're going to perform metric aggregations on. So let's say for some reason we want to calculate the sum of all unit prices of items in our index. So let's scroll down to the section, then down to example. So what we're saying here is get search results from e-commerce data index. I'm sending an aggregations request, which I'll name sum unit price. The type of aggregations I want to run is sum. And I want you to sum up the values of the field unit price over all documents in our index. So let's copy and paste that into the console. Make sure to select and send. As usual, it'll pull up number of hits and the top 10 hits by default, but we're not interested in that today. So when you minimize line 10 by clicking on this downward arrow, you'll see our aggregations results, which we name sum unit price. And the value tells us the sum of all unit price of items in our index. Okay, so I'm going to share a pro tip here. So if you're only interested in the results of your aggregations and not the top 10 hits, there's a simple solution for that. So let's scroll down to using a size parameter section. So if you look at the example, this is almost identical to the last request we sent, except that we added a size parameter up top and set it equal to zero. This tells Elasticsearch to forget about fetching the top 10 results because we're not interested in it. So let's copy and paste that into the console. Make sure to select and send. You'll see that top 10 hits are now omitted from the response and you gain access to the aggregations results right away. And since we're only focused on aggregations today, we'll set the size parameter to zero in all requests we send from now on. Okay, so we just covered how to calculate the sum. Next, we'll calculate the lowest unit price of an item in our index. So let's scroll down to compute the lowest unit price of an item, then down to example. So this request is almost identical to the last request, except that we're naming this aggregation's lowest unit price, and the type of aggregation we're running is min, which is short for minimum. So let's copy and paste that into the console. Make sure to select and send. You'll see that aggregations results, which we named lowest unit price, is 0 0.001. So what if we're interested in the highest unit price of an item? So let's scroll down to that section, then down to example. 
So again, this request is very similar to the last one, except that we're naming the aggregations results as highest unit price, and the type of aggregations we're running is max, which is short for maximum. So let's copy and paste that into the console. Make sure to select and send. You'll see that the highest unit price of an item is 498.79. Well, what about the average unit price? So let's scroll down to that section, then down to example. Again, almost identical to the last request, except that we named the results average unit price and the type of aggregations we're running is ABG, short for average. So let's copy and paste that into the console. Make sure to select and send. And you'll see that the average unit price is 3.61. Now calculating these individually gets kind of tedious, right? So let's calculate all of these in one go. To do so, we'll use the stats aggregations. So let's scroll down to that section, then down to example. Again, very similar to the last request, except that we're naming the aggregations results, all stats, unit price, and the type of aggregations we're running is stats. So let's copy and paste that into the console. Make sure to select and send. You'll see that stats aggregations lists the count, which is the number of unit prices the aggregations was performed on. It also lists the min, max, average, and sum of all unit prices in our index. So stats aggregations is a great way to calculate all of these in one go. Lastly, what if you want the number of unique customers who bought from our app? Well, this is where cardinality aggregations comes into play. So let's scroll down to that section, then down to example. So cardinality aggregation computes the count of unique values for a given field. And since we want the number of unique customers who bought from us, we're gonna run a cardinality aggregations. So again, it's very similar to the last request, except that we're naming the aggregations, number of unique customers, and the type of aggregations we're running is cardinality on the field customer ID. So let's copy and paste that into the console. Make sure to select and send. And you'll see that we have 4359 unique customers who have purchased from us. So as you can see, metric aggregation is super helpful in calculating numeric values based on your data set. All right, we just learned about metric aggregations and when we should use these requests. This content is an excerpt from the Beginner's Crash Course to Elasticstack Part 4. And Part 4 is a full-length workshop where I talk about metric aggregations, bucket aggregations, and combined aggregations. And these aggregations are used to get different types of insights from our data. So if you prefer the full-length workshop format, check out the link on the screen. And the link is also included in the description of this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode of Mini Beginner's Crash Course to Elasticsearch and Kibana.